Evening all, hi there, it's Jim here at uh, Tutor to You. Welcome to our latest live stream for AQA A-level business students. And uh, well, it's Friday night, isn't it? Six o'clock. So I thought we'd do a quick half hour, 25 minutes, half an hour or so, taking a look at a new paper one question, a 25 marker. Quite a few students in our Grade Booster workshops have asked for some more practice just unpicking 25 markers. So I thought, why not? Let's do one. Let's pick one on a topic that could come up. So we've drawn it from the advanced information. Just looking at the live chat, lots of people here. Simran here, David, uh, Aaron, Sasha, Nish, Jude and more. So welcome to you. Uh, feel free to say hi in the live chat if you're joining us live. Of course, lots more people will be watching us on on replay and catch up. So you won't get to see the live chat. So welcome to you too. And uh, also let me know in live chat whether or not you've joined us uh, so far on any of our cinema workshops. Because we've just finished London yesterday. And uh, well, we've still got Manchester and leads to go next week. So looking forward to those. So, uh, okay, well, let's, should we uh, should I just briefly explain how we're going to work through today's session? Uh, I've got a 25 mark question for you. And really the purpose is just to think about it, to unpick it, consider how we might respond to it. And then I'll take you through, I've had a go at writing an answer. It's taken me about 20 minutes. It's not perfect. Def definitely not perfect, but hopefully okay. And it just gives you a, a, a flavour for how you could structure a response to what I think is quite a difficult question. And thank you very much for the lovely feedback on Stratford, White City. Uh, all good. Manchester and Leeds will be just as good, I'm sure. Uh, okay, well, um, <laughs> shall we make a start? Let's move on to um, let's get the right window working here. And you, Oh, good, you can still see me. All good. So uh, before we get into the question, just a quick reminder uh, what we said on the on the workshops about these 25 markers uh do recommend you do them last in that second hour in paper one i think get the mcqs out of the way um get those two four mark calculation questions out of the way get the three nine mark questions out of the way get some good marks on those and then give yourself at least an hour so stop if you've got to the hour point stop and uh, give yourself two lots of half an hour to do the uh, the 25 markers justice and of course that involves spending a few minutes making a choice it's the only paper where you get cho a chance to uh, to choose which of the two two questions from the four that you get to do don't forget of course as we've mentioned before uh highly evaluative i mean these essays are marked holistically but nominally 10 out of the 25 marks are for evaluation it's the highest rated skill so we need to make sure ideally we evaluate throughout so try to include some pie sentences or pie phrases pie comments point included evaluation as we go got a couple of examples of that to show you you don't have to if you don't want to but it's just a good way of, of reducing the risk of uh, maybe missing out on some marks particularly for example if you just run a bit short of time on the second 25 marker maybe don't do the conclusion as much justice as you like it to at least grab hold of some marks as we were going um, and also, I just wanted to show you an, an example of an introduction. So we mentioned in the workshops that the examiners have said students who do well on the 25 markers often signal to the examiner what their response is um, in terms of what their likely judgment is going to be before they even get into the first argument. So we'll take a quick look at an introduction. But as we've mentioned, I think, um, yeah, sorry, three nine markers in paper one, Sasha. I thought I'd said three nine markers. It's two lots of four, isn't it? calculations and then uh, three nine markers two of which will be standard nine markers i think one nine marker will have a a, a data element to it but yeah th sorry, three nine markers in the first hour uh, so time management is, cri is critical you need to make sure you uh, leave yourself an hour for those 225 markers but most importantly and this is a point that graham was making making uh, in in the workshops time spent planning being selective about which point or points you're going to make and what your evaluation is that that will pay massive dividends it means you'll you're less likely to spend forever writing and drifting away from the question good so there we go that's just a quick reminder and of course we also talked about the shape of response didn't we how our judgment needs to be built on our arguments so the judgment shouldn't come as a surprise should be supported by your arguments and of course we need to make sure our judgment is balanced ideally with some application throughout so again do you remember graham in uh, session two if you've been to the workshops mentioned have the need for application throughout including a little bit of evaluation in the in the, uh, the conclusion the judgment so i've had a go at doing this okay shall we have a look at our question for today i'll put it on screen and then ask you to read it maybe just 
uh, let me have your initial thoughts in the live chat on firstly whether you would pick it and secondly uh, what do you think the answer might be here it is i'll read it out obviously you can read it yourself but i'll read it out uh, the boards of public companies are increasingly using elkington's triple bottom line to assess business performance so we're drawing this from three, just looking at my spec here, 3.7.3, 3, assessing overall business performance, which is one of the topics in 2022, which could be examined in paper paper one, although not examined in paper two and paper three. Anyway, never mind all that. The question is, should the shareholders of public limited companies be concerned if management assess business performance mainly using people and planet measures rather than profit? Just let me drag the live chat over here so I've, I've got it in full view. Lots of people typing in. What do you think to that question? First question for you in the live chat is, firstly, would you pick that if that came up? What do you think? Let me know. Always worth reading both uh, any of these questions, obviously both questions for Section C and for Section D, at least twice, just to make sure you fully understood what they're trying to achieve. And as Simran's quite rightly, good evening, Simran, by the way, as Simran's quite rightly put in live chat, it depends, good evaluation, on what the other question is. Um, so I suppose what you're saying is you might do, you might not, but it might not be your choice, your question of choice. Um, OK, so as we're looking at that then, so what do we think? What's our initial view? What's our initial opinion on that? Should shareholders of public companies be concerned if their management start using performance measures of people and planet rather than profit, what do you think? What's your just type into your live into the live chat? What's your initial feelings on that? Thoughts and feelings. And of course, if you watch you on replay, you too not into live chat, but just jot down what you think the answer is if you were going to answer that. And I'll have a look just to pick out and uh, comment on a few thoughts as they come in. OK, um, so Sam is sort of in the, in the middle, on the fence on this. He's probably going to argue, yeah, some shareholders should be pretty concerned and others probably not. Um, and of course, the answer is not all shareholders will be concerned and, and lots would be. So the question really is where, where roughly do, do you stand on this? It isn't not a yes or no question. Um, I have some really good points coming in here, so... These are potential points. We'll, we'll, we'll unpick the question for the next minute or two. Uh, Vanessa is saying that they, they may focus um, they may focus management, uh, particularly if there's an increase in environmentally conscious uh, customers. In other words, where customer and where demand is linked to how a business um, addresses people and planet as well as profit, uh, that could actually be a really important focus for them. Therefore, shareholders probably wouldn't be concerned, would they? They'd be actually quite pleased about it. Um, Simon's saying, uh, yeah, potentially focusing on these these two areas can potentially benefit the measure of profit. That's a really good point. And in fact, that is a point that I've gone with in my suggested walkthrough here. I've got an answer, but it's not meant to be anything other than just one way of answering the question. Superb stuff. Some great stuff coming into live chat. Hopefully you've had a minute or two in, uh, if you watch on replay, to have a think about it as well. Uh, so why don't we just uh, why don't we just unpick the question here? Let's get the question on the screen. There's a question. So don't forget, with all of these questions, we always try to work out what do we need to focus on. Now, with the 25 markers, it's more about focusing on the wording. You know, what are the evaluation hooks? What's the context we need to write in? That's the most important thing here. The start and the end point are quite quite straightforward. I think the start point, this is, this is a question about measuring business performance and uh, the fact that there are three different measures. It's a good example of a 25 marker where there is a specific model referred to. So we had one last year in 2021 on the Boston matrix, and we've had the balanced scorecard used in a 25 marker before. So models and theories are sometimes explicitly examined in these questions, but sometimes they're not. But this one, clearly it is, isn't it? It's the focus. but uh, And the scope, obviously... We know for 25 marker we need balance and we need a judgment that's supported by those arguments with some counterbalance. But let's over to you now. What do you think 
What do you think? Are, what's the evaluation hook in the question? What's the thing that we need to keep coming back to again and again and again so that we remain focused on the question? I'll ask that question whilst I'm also looking at some more great arguments coming in here, which are uh, potential responses to the question. But what's the evaluation hook? Over to you for the next 30 seconds or so. Some great potential points here, which are being typed into the live chat. Obviously, people in the live chat can see them. People on replay will have to imagine how good they are, but they're some fantastic stuff. Um, some good examples as well, some great uh, applications. So Sash is pointing, pointing out how um, shareholders shouldn't be concerned if people and planet are the focus because it enables customers to become much stronger more strongly aligned with the business's uh positioning it's, it's ethical positioning it's, it's behavior and a great example of ben and jerry's there with a strong and loyal customer base partly to some extent or to a large extent because of ben and jerry's commitment to to people and planet the fact that they also make fantastic ice cream is uh, is a is a bonus too in my opinion so what do we think uh yeah so nish and rav preet and simran and david have all picked out um, picked out the word concern. So this is the this is the really important evaluation hook. I think here we need to keep coming back to should shareholders of public limited companies. So our context is going to be public limited companies, and that gives us some useful context to help develop our arguments. Should shareholders be concerned or not if management increasingly look at people and planet measures? Increasingly, not abandoning profit, but increasing looking at people on planet. Some great potential lines of analysis here. Dividend, share price being uh, mentioned. Oh, we've got Graham in, in the house as well. Good to see you, Graham. Uh, Simmons asking, could short-termism come into this question? Absolutely it could. In fact, short-termism is part of the same part of the specification. It's not actually yet been examined as of 2022. So definitely, and I, and I've got to uh, uh, try to have a go adding that into one of my answers. Superb stuff. Yeah, so I think the evaluation hook we need to keep coming back to in our responses is this idea of concern. Should shareholders be concerned? That is, if you keep stay focused on that, why they might be concerned, why they shouldn't be concerned, why they might welcome this new focus, then you're not going to go far wrong. Keep coming back to that. That's the evaluation hook that we need to use in our arguments, but also refer back to and, and build on in our conclusion. Great stuff. Loads of stuff coming through here on the on the live chat. We've got about 10 to 12 minutes left. So now will be a good time, I think, to maybe have a look at a work to answer. Before we do that, don't forget, in our workshops, we just identified the need to structure our 25 markers efficiently. That's what we were saying, isn't it? So if you can, don't have to, but if you can, worth writing a sentence or two, no more than that, at the start of the 25 marker, signpost into the examiner where your judgment is likely to be and then the following argument is going to be the argument that supports that likely judgment so your supporting argument peak and pie as in yeah pecan point, explain the point develop it in context add some application as you go but if you can you don't have to if you can add a little bit of evaluation at the end ideally maybe using the evaluation hook just to pick up the the low-hanging evaluation credit then your second argument needs to be a counter-argument to show some balance to make the other case. And then, because it's short, don't write three or four more paragraphs. You haven't got time. Much better to spend half a page, seven, eight, nine, ten lines maybe, going back to the, to the question and answering it, thinking about the, the five Ws, possibly using the uh, the AGM approach, but you know, answering the question, justifying it, but then showing some counterbalance. And also, ideally, including a little bit more evaluation. Uh, certainly evaluation, application in your conclusion. Um, so, as Graham's pointing out in the live chat, it's it's really, this question is all about why should shareholders be concerned? Why should they not be concerned? What's your view? Good. So, what I thought I'd do is just for the last uh, 10 minutes or so on this one, uh, and obviously, if you're watching on live chat, you might want to have a go now at planning your answer, thinking about the point and the points that you would argue and where your evaluation might lie, because uh, that's what we're doing here in the live chat. 
I'll go through an, an example plan and then I'll take you through. I've literally just had a go at writing an answer to this, so we'll, I'll see what you think. Uh, I'll be interested to get your thoughts in the live chat because it's... Um, um, I must admit, I've, I've read through it quickly and uh, it's not perfect. <laughs> so just picking up some of the points uh, that are coming through in the live chat just to help help me out here. Um, Daniel's saying, uh, shareholders might welcome it in order to sustain long-term profits. Uh, so really making the case of saying, no, you shouldn't be concerned about this. This is this is good. They should welcome it, not be concerned by it. That's a really nice evaluation phrase. Uh, and the argument here would be that increasing demand and customer awareness for environmental and people-friendly products. So, yeah, that's a really compelling argument. And obviously, you develop that. Well, here we go then. So here's my here's my introduction. This is, by the way, this isn't an answer. This is just a plan. And I'm not saying your plan should be this detailed, but I was just trying to sort of think through what my points were going to be and explain them. So I would start by saying that shareholders should welcome. In fact, I'm, I'm taking Daniel's point in the live chat. Shareholders should welcome rather than be concerned by the main use of people and planet, really. That's my view. Most shareholders, anyway, because long-term profit is impacted by the wider activities of business. So that, that's that's where my answer's going. Signposting to the examiner where my judgment will be. And then, of course, what I then need to do is then support that. So always, I think your first argument needs to be in support of where your judgment's going to be. So these days... Overall business performance can't ignore the wider impact of business activities. And if you if you don't take account of people and planet, actually it it risks profits, it risks damaging a business reputation, it could potentially lead to lower sales and significant costs, both of which could actually adversely affect profit. So that's one argument. I think that the, the, you could also include in that how actually you turn it into a negative into a positive. Actually, lots of customers Therefore, lots of customers increasingly looking to buy from businesses that are taking people and planet seriously uh, and switching from businesses that maybe aren't. Your counter-argument is really making the case for profit as being the focus of management. It's saying, you know, okay, yeah, we recognise that people and planet are out there, but we are employed to make profits and we act in the best interest of shareholders. In fact, there's a divorce, isn't it, between ownership and control. Therefore, um, those who control the business should take steps to make sure that they are acting in the best interest of shareholders. Shareholders' returns come from profits, from dividends. If you damage profits by focusing unnecessarily on people and planet, then potentially you're damaging the shareholders' interests. And therefore, of course, they would be concerned. I'm not entirely sure I believe that argument, but it doesn't matter because we're not, we're not writing an argument one-sided. We're trying to share some balance. However, my conclusion is going to say something like, in most situations, shareholders should not be concerned. Now, you can see from this, I keep coming back to this word concern. It doesn't really matter how you argue it, as long as you keep coming back to the hook and you're staying relevant in a meeting uh, the key demands of the question. And the key demand is, should shareholders be concerned? Okay, let's... Um, oh, well, there's loads, of, there's loads more stuff coming into the live chat. Should we just spend a few minutes looking at my attempt at an answer i'll be really interested to get anyone's feedback in the live chat as to ways you could improve it um because there's no doubt it could be but i'd try to write it in 20 minutes uh although i typed it in 20 minutes and i can probably type quicker than i can write so here we go so i split it into four parts uh, a one one or two line introduction my argument for my counter argument and then i thought right i've got seven or eight minutes left here i need to write a judgment um and ideally include some balance in my evaluation at the end. So here we go. So here's my introduction. What do you think? Let's read it through. Well, earning, I'll read it through, just to see if I can make sense of it. While earning profits will always be an important performance measure, these days public companies need to consider the wider impact of their activities. So shareholders should not be concerned if their managers increasingly look at planet and people to gain a better understanding of performance and ensure the business meets its wider responsibilities. So I've sort of kind of touched on CSR. Of course, pe people, the people part of the triple bottom line is CSR, and CSR explicitly isn't examined. However, as Graham and I were mentioning in our workshops, these these arguments, the, all of these topics are interlinked, so you can bring them in to, to underpin your argument. And this is still talking about people and planet and profit as performance measures. So still very, hopefully, still focused. So there's my introduction. I think the examiner would know where roughly where I'm going to go. So my next 
argument is here. And I've really just tried to, I've tried to sort of make the case for why you shouldn't be concerned uh, and really saying, look, actually, if you, and really I'm just picking up the point, I think that Daniel and uh, Simran and others in the in the live chat have, have made the case, which is actually, it's a, it's a good thing for shareholders, this. So many shareholders should not be concerned by the greater focus on the tri triple bottom line. This is because it's important for managers of public companies to assess performance using wider measures which reflect the interdependent nature of business activity. So let's explain how and why that might be the case. So, for example, measuring the environmental impact of goods and services and setting objectives to minimise harm. By doing that, companies can often increase their brand or business value in the eyes of consumers. A good example, now we're into an example. Now, I know we mentioned in the workshops you shouldn't always mention specific businesses, but of course you can if you wish. I just think with Apple and others, one or two others, it's that they are sort of gold gold tickets for this kind of question. Um, and not every business in the consumer electronics industry, for example, is as socially responsible as, as Apple. So anyway, so I've used Apple. Um so uh, a good example is Apple. So a bit of application here to try to support that point. Who shareholders not shareholders are not concerned. There we are using the, the hook again about the company's increasing focus on sustainability and trying to achieve net zero carbon emissions. So those are two examples of Planet. Um, why? Because many Apple customers believe this approach makes Apple's products and services more valuable. It's part of the brand. And therefore, it helps Apple charge premium prices and achieve high profits. So I tried to contextualize my analysis, try to blend it in together. Basically saying, if you focus on these two, it makes profits easy to achieve because people are prepared to pay for it. Uh, and then another example, more application shareholders of other public companies such as, so we're using a bit of such as seasoning here. So rather than just talking about public companies, why not mention a couple? So such as Nike and Disney. Is it Nike or Nike? Nike and Disney also benefit from initiatives designed to protect the planet and meet societal responsible, society, uh, social responsibility needs. So um, just trying to provide some more application to help underpin this point. And all of these businesses have high and growing profits and market capitalization partly because they focus on and measure performance on people and planet. And then just a sentence at the end, a, a, it's, a, it's a, a pie sentence. It's a little bit of evaluation. This goes back to the hook. Uh, in other words, why would shareholders of these businesses be concerned? Why? Since people and planet measures are also helping to increase profits at the same time. So it's not repeating the point. It's just basically saying, look, if you're a shareholder in Apple, the last thing you'll be is concerned if if Tim Cook starts talking about, you know, recycling and environmental sustainability because that's actually adding value to his products and therefore making the business more valuable. And it's Nike, according to Sasha. I thought it was. Nike. Good. So there's our first point. And I ho hopefully you think that's a, that's a decent point. I think it's okay, isn't it? So here's our counter argument. I, I found this harder to write. But anyway, I got through it eventually. <laughs> of course, some shareholders might be right to be concerned if profit becomes less important as a measure of performance because profits are closely linked to share price and market capitalization and are a key source of finance. In other words, if you're not focused on profit, there's a danger here. Your share price might fall. You might your your finance might 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 weaken. So shareholders might be concerned if decisions are taken that result in much lower profits in the short term. So here we go, Simran, we're using short-termism. For example, by incurring costs to reduce environmental impact. Now, I haven't got an example of that. I've just said, for example, by incurring costs. In other words, that would reduce profits to reduce environmental impact. I, I don't have a specific example. doesn't matter. I'll put it in. Then explain it. Why that might be a concern. If these higher costs result in lower profits for the foreseeable future, it's likely that shareholders will suffer from lower dividends and also a lower share price. So they should be concerned. Similarly, in the case of public companies that have high gearing and low profits, managers need to look to the short term when measuring performance because it might mean uh, that 
you can't invest in these initiatives for people on planet unless you've got the profits and the cash flows to be able to do it. In other words, there's a need for you to focus on cash and profit and maybe forget the other parts. And therefore, by not focusing on those, there's a danger. Shareholders might be concerned about that. And of course, there are other businesses where, to be honest with you, customers are probably less interested in, in sustainability and carbon emissions and they just want low prices. Yeah. So shareholders of businesses like Sports Direct probably just want the business to be focused on profit, sales and profit and profit and profit and profit, rather than being too environmentally friendly. Possibly. I don't know whether that's true or not, but I'm guessing that's there'll be a lot of shareholders who would be concerned if Mike Ashley and his board suddenly decide to, to switch to focus to profit and planet. So anyway, I've made the case. I'm not sure whether it's particularly convincing. What do you think? But in many ways, it doesn't matter because I've made a counter argument. I'm not entirely convinced by it, but uh, maybe you can let me know in live chat as to what you think of it. <laughs> um, it's not my best, and I don't believe it, but I've written it, so I've got some balance. I'll look out for your views in live chat on that question, on that uh, on that counter argument. Anyway, here we go. Here's the conclusion. Now, as Graham has mentioned, reminded everyone, ten marks for evaluation. So, if we've been evaluating as we go, uh, and evaluating throughout the response, uh, pretty sure. We're going to be in credit with the examiner, but we do need to make sure we come back to the question and write a conclusion that meets the demands of the question, goes back to the hook and answers it. But of course, we don't want to bring in new arguments, but we do want to bring in, if we can, some new application because we need to apply. We want to add some value, don't we, to our evaluation. Uh, James, it's very, very kind. It's a decent, my counter argument was a decent argument. That is, that's, that's good. That's good. Hams is making a good point. More confident writing three paragraphs on the... Oh, you, you feel more confident writing three paragraphs on the conclusion. Yeah, I know what you mean. The only problem with three paragraphs is you're going to have to be quick because you want them all to be of the same depth uh, and and quality. And, of course, if one is a weak paragraph, that can reduce the overall impact of the response. So just be just be careful about three paragraphs before you get to the conclusion because you don't have a lot of time and I'd rather you spend more time on the conclusion. Anyway, here, here's mine. What do you think to this one then, please? So go back to the hook. Go back to the question. Answer it. A, Jim, answer the question. Overall, most shareholders of public companies should not be concerned about the increasing use of people on planet alongside the traditional measure of profit. So I've, that's in red. I've answered the question. Now I need to justify it. This is because, as argued above, businesses operate interdependently. They can make higher profits and still look after the environment and society at the same time. Yeah. Now, I need a little bit. I don't need a new argument. I just need a little bit more application to help cement that justification. So I tried to bring in a couple of new examples. In this case, they're businesses. So as businesses such as IKEA and Patagonia have shown, shareholders benefit as customers increasingly look to buy from brands that take these wider responsibilities seriously. And shareholders of those companies realise that high profits can be sustained by, can be grown by focusing more on people and planet. And profit becomes the, the output, doesn't it? In and then I said, indeed, that might be why they invest, because that's what they believe. So why would they be concerned? Now, we need some balance, don't we, in this evaluation? So don't forget the counter-argument. Of course, not all businesses do this and shareholders of businesses like Sports Direct and others might well be concerned if their managers suddenly start to focus on something other than profit, despite customers having next to no interest in it. So a little bit of balance. Now, I'm not sure I've got quite enough balance in there, but it, it'll do because I wanted to finish off and just sign off. Let's say I was running out of time and I go back to that question and basically help the examiner <laughs> see that I've addressed the question. However, for most shareholders, they have little to fear. I didn't want to use the phrase, most shareholders don't need to be concerned, because I've used that about 10 times. So I've just said, for most shareholders, they have little to fear and much to gain from using wider performance measures. So, I'm not sure what you think of that conclusion. I'd be interested to get Graham's thoughts on it. It's in the live chat. I wrote it in about eight or nine minutes. I typed it. 
I'm, I'm, it's okay. I could improve it, but in an exam, okay is is absolutely fine as long as you've stayed focused on that that evaluation hook and focused on the question. And importantly, that you've added a bit of value in your conclusion, uh, in your judgment. So it needs to be supported by your previous arguments. But if you can bring in a little bit more application, uh, as well as answering the question, then I think it should do the trick. Um, anyway, that's that's my answer. There we go. So it's. Uh, um, how long did it take to plan and embellish? I spent about three or four minutes planning it, and I thought, I'm just going to sit down and type. Sit down and type. Uh, but I'm used to typing these type of things. So you could you could write less, and certainly less make it less um, slick, if you like. I'm not sure whether it is slick or not. But I've tried to keep on referring to the, to the evaluation hook. Um, you could get away with less, but anyway, it does. It does the trick, I think. Now, Graham's making the point that the judgment is balanced, it's supported by prior analysis, and it adds a value to the response. So, I'm guessing from that, it means that the judgment is 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 a is a is a good part of the overall response. Therefore, we're in we're in the game, aren't we, for for picking up uh, as many as possible of the available evaluation marks. So in terms of total wordage, I would say if I was writing that off, in, in, writing that in a in a in a in a uh, exam booklet, I'm thinking it's about a page and a half, page and three quarters. My handwriting's quite small. I'd always leave a couple of lines at least in between the, each element, so the introduction, the argument for, the argument against, and the judgment. Sometimes more lines because it gives you a chance to go back and 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 add some stuff, just to make it easier for the examiner to see the, the different elements of the um, the different elements of. The response. So, what do you think? Any thoughts on that before we uh, we come back to the screen? I might ask. Uh, I might ask. There is one person in the room in the live chat who is uh, a very experienced examiner to see what. So, tell me whether or not that was a level four or level five response. I'm hoping it's at least one of those level four, maybe, um, maybe even better. Uh, but let's look out for that. Okay. <laughs> what do we think? Are we? Has that been useful? I suppose that's the first the first question. I'll leave that on the screen there, just whilst I'm waiting for the uh, waiting for the market to market. Um, what do we learn from that? That is, there are lots of potential questions that could come up uh, in section C and section D. Just try to pick one that is linked to other topics in the advanced information. For example, market capitalization, share price, uh, reasons why shareholders invest. Um, as well as uh, the, the specific part of, of the specification, which for Elkington is 3.7.3. Um, so, oh, I've been told it's full marks. Good stuff. Cheers. Uh, so, you know, it's just it's just one possible one possible question. So, I th if it will be useful for you, uh, we'll do more of these to to work through some more uh, 25 markers, particularly on on section D, the sort of 3.9, 3.10 which appears to be, just looking at the advanced information, that's going to be a source of a lot of a lot of questions in, uh, in paper one, potentially 25 markers as well as uh, multiple choice questions. Um, right, let's go back to the main camera. Uh, I think we're good. We've got another minute or two just in the session. If anybody else wants to ask any more questions or let me know, it'd be really useful for Graham and I just to have a bit of feedback in the live chat as to whether you'd find more of these sessions, these, you're looking at 25 markers, useful. What we're planning to do with the live live streams is to is to do a mix of stuff. So we've already done one MCQ blast with fifteen new questions, and we definitely do want to do at least one more, possibly two of those ahead of uh, the the first paper one or the paper one. Uh, but also, we want to spend a bit of time working through some possible nine markers because there's three of those in paper one, and that's really good practice for when we get into beyond half term, get into paper two, because uh, as we know, we've got some nine nine markers there. So. And I think it'd be quite nice to do a session just on format calculation questions because we want to make sure that we, we get as many of those as possible. Uh, and there are some fair, not predictable, but fairly likely calculations in paper one. Uh, so we might as well spend some time on those. Uh, yeah, the question, is it recorded? Yeah, well, if you're watching this on, on record, then you proved it is on record. So yes, it is recorded and i'll make the the powerpoint available uh, later tonight to download if you wish um 
I need to... Uh, Tuesday the 26th of April presentation has not been uploaded. I thought it had. I thought it was in the download section. So apologies, I will check for that. Um, I'll make sure that those presentations are are in the um, in the course. A couple of people asking for a 25 marker to complete as homework. Uh, yeah, well, we can do that. I can, we can set them in the course and then maybe as a download and then we could potentially... Um, Either go through it live or or record a short video taking you through how you might have responded to the question. So either way, we can do more of those. Uh, James is saying, can you go over a session on how to use context or case studies? So really application, isn't it? We can definitely do that. Definitely. Lauren's saying yes to calculation questions. Can't have enough of those, can you? All good. Well, that's fantastic. I tell you what, I really do appreciate lots of people joining me live on a Friday night. Um, you've almost certainly had a pretty hard week of, of studying and revising. And uh, we're, we're, we're not quite in the final, final straight yet, are we? But we're starting to get close, three or four weeks away from our first our first exam. So it's uh, great that so many people are logging in to, to join us. Uh, and we appreciate that. Uh, I think we have already set up the next load of live streams, but it's entirely possible that we may add one or two more in. So look out for those. Um, we're just looking at a way of getting them listed on the front of the course a little bit easier and also obviously we'll email everybody on the on the course list so um, hopefully you'll find a way of of catching us and I think uh, Graham and I certainly Graham will help uh, remind people and promote the fact that the live streams are happening on each course on the Tutor you Instagram account so if you're not already following Tutor you business on Instagram please do uh, daily revision questions, lots of calculations, lots of MCQs, and I think we'll probably also throw out some 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 possible essay questions on there at some stage and ask you to respond and plan points. That might be a way of doing some practice homework. So um, please, if you're not already following Tutor Do Business, please do so now to make Graham a very happy man. Aaron, Hamster, Jude, Zimran, Hardy, everybody else who's been in the live chat, many thanks for joining me tonight. And uh, and James, enjoy your weekend too. So, well, it's half term. Uh, what am I talking about? Bank holiday weekend. So, we're taking a few days off. We're back on the road. We're in Manchester next uh, Tuesday. And uh, our last AQA session is in Leeds. So, if you've not yet joined us on the Cinnamon Workshop, or if you think you know somebody you might like to attend, we're in Leeds next Thursday. That's our last Cinema Workshop before the exams. And then it's live streams all the way. Thanks for joining us. Always appreciate it. And, uh, We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.